All right, uh, welcome back to my Tesla. Today we're gonna talk about a few things to look for when you're getting your CPO. Okay, so um, uh, this is a video that was requested uh, of me to shoot. There's a few people out there looking at getting CPOs and a uh, few of you wanna know what to expect or what things to be looking for when you get your CPO. Now that I've had mine a little while, um, things to you know just consider, uh, things you might wanna look for in the car. And I wanna start off with um, if you are buying your car local or if you're buying your car off site. Uh, what I mean is, uh, for instance, I got mine in Denver and I live in Chicago. So there were a couple of things I could not do when um, considering this car. First off, I couldn't look at the car. You know, um, all I used was the description that they sent to me as a, um, this is what the car is. Um, so my, I guess my first piece of advice is you need to consider whether or not you wanna buy a car that has to be shipped in or if you wanna wait until you can find kind of that perfect car in your local area. Um, one downside to buying a car uh, away, obviously, is not being able to see it, sit in it, drive it, see what condition it's in. So my first piece of advice for anybody buying a CPO out of state, um, one thing that I did not do that I should have done is asked for pictures of the car um, prior to my $1,000 deposit. And if somebody else puts a $1,000 deposit on it, okay, I'll just wait for the next one. There are plenty of plenty of them out there. Um, I really should have just, in inside, outside, what's the condition of the car? I think these are just smart things to do when buying any car, uh, regardless of it being a Tesla. So that's my first piece of advice, is if you're buying a car out of state, ask for pictures of external and internal. Uh, number two, uh, from what I understand, at least my experience, and maybe somebody else out there actually knows for sure, but from my understanding, the cars, uh, the CPOs are not actually certified until they have your $1,000 deposit. So they've got a bunch of used Teslas, uh, some used inventory, and as soon as they get a $1,000 deposit, they'll take it through its certification process. So just know that the car is not in its best condition when you are putting your $1,000 down. So my, my piece of advice number two is to request um, a copy of the uh, certification after the car has been certified at least get documentation of what they did to the car. Um, now, they have told me that they cannot give details of what has been done to the car with prior owners. Okay, no problem. But if you have put $1,000 down on that car, in my opinion, that car is in process to be purchased by you. You should have the right to have documentation on what has been updated on the car with your purchase. Um, number three would be getting, if there's any body work or anything that needs to be done to the car, I would ask for copies or pic, excuse me, pictures um, of the car after the body work has been done, just to kind of have an idea. Again, this is all assuming that the car is out of state. If it's local, I think um, you as consumers would be smart enough to drive over, take a look at the car, see what condition it's in. I mean, um, in the long run, what do you have? You, the only thing you'd have to lose is a thousand dollars, because once your deposit is down on a CPO, um, it really cannot be transferred to another car, um, because once they start that certification process, it is it is yours. So uh, again, that is that is what I understand of it. Couple of things that I've noticed um, on the car that I didn't notice right away. Obviously, anybody who's been watching my videos knows that I did not notice the carbon fiber 
I got kind of caught up in the delivery process, the excitement of getting my Tesla, and I did not notice the carbon fiber, which should have met specs or the details of the car as I, as I ordered it, uh, I guess, as I purchased it. Um, you know, a couple of wear spots in the car, for instance, uh, over, over here, um, you'll notice on my video that I showed a little bit of wear. That's in process of being fixed. They ordered that part, so they're gonna fix that, no problem. Um, I, they said the brakes are in good working order, but the brakes do make a little bit of noise uh, when I use them. It kinda grip a little bit. I was driving in um, some heavy rain the other day, and I noticed overnight that um, that when I went to go leave the next morning, they, they were kind of a little, little stuck. So, um, the car's got 40,000 miles on it. Um, so, you know, they are what they are. Um, and I actually, although I use the, um, regenerative, um, uh, braking a lot, I still find myself when you're going, you know, 60 miles an hour or something like that, that you're going to have to use your brakes. So just know that. Uh, probably not as much as you normally would, but I guess it depends on how aggressive or how hard of a driver you are. Um, other than that, I would have to honestly say that the car is in good working order. Um, it's uh, it's as brand new as they're gonna is they're gonna make a used car. Uh, in any any issues that I've had with the car, they've addressed it, so I've been very happy. Uh, I I do want to give just my thoughts as I've been able to drive a couple other Teslas while my car's been in service. That if I had a chance to do it again, I would do this. First off, I would definitely get something older than a 2013, so I'd get a 2014 or newer. And just like any anything closer to being brand new, it's going to be nicer. But I will say that I feel like there's a couple things that I've noticed. First off is the um, the finishings on the inside of the car on the 2014s is just a little nicer. I feel like they just kind of learned their lessons a little bit in the first couple years. And starting at the 2014s, you'll notice things like the seats feel like they've got more cushion in them. Uh, my seats are great. They're not very narrow. Uh, I have driven a 2014 before where they had what seemed to be pretty narrow pockets on the side where they hit your legs. And I just, I can't stand that. So I like these wide seats, but they are pretty firm, what I would consider pretty firm leather performance seats. So um, long-term driving, it's fine. I'm comfortable, but in some of the other cars that I've been in, um, they've, they're just more comfortable. So that would be one recommendation. Two, I've noticed that for instance, I have the upgraded sound system in, in this car for the 2013. And um, in the 2014, the bass was by far better than in this car. I mean, the bass was so heavy, it was rattling the uh, rear view mirror in the 2014. In this, it's good, it's really good, but it it was, it just feel, felt like it was, it was complete. It was like a completely different sound system. Um, some of the other things that I was told. Now, I haven't done research or known this, but just what people have been telling me. For instance, um, this car had to have the drive chain uh, replaced. Although they've never given me documentation on that, they just told me that they were doing that. And I was told that there were known issues for drive trains on the earlier models. Um, didn't know that until after. And then also, as you guys know, I had to get my door handle replaced. Again, another thing I was told uh, has been a known issue. Um, I would also consider a 2014 as I've, you know, as they had the black headliner. And I wanted actually an all black interior. These are just some of the things that had I known during my purchase process, I probably would have made some different decisions. Um, I also would have considered getting a sunroof or just the moonroof, panoramic roof. Um, as you can also add a roof rack with those, you cannot do that with a solid roof like I have it. Not that I've ever used a roof rack, but the idea that it's a possibility, I think for me is, you know, is great. I got the rear seats in this car. I didn't ask for them. It was just in the car. I'll never use those, but I maybe would have used a roof rack so uh, on some trips. 
Anyway, I don't want to go any further um, as this video is kind of long already. Those are just some of my thoughts on um, on the CPO process, things to look for before, um, things to uh, maybe a couple options to consider. But overall, very happy with my CPO. Um, and thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the likes. I appreciate the comments. Um, any suggestions that you guys have or any other videos that you want my opinions on, please leave those in the comments.